Ladies and gentlemen, I sort of sound like a ringmaster, don't I? You know, need the top hat. Ladies and gentlemen, we have for you today world class, professional, first class, outstanding, phenomenal, unique, powerful, absolutely stunning, spectacular new exhibit at the Creation Museum. And I'm about to unveil it. We didn't have a ribbon, so I just stood in front of the camera. And we don't have thousands of people here because, unfortunately, the governor of Kentucky still has everything being shut down and we need to pray that we reopen. But here we are with this brand new exhibit and it's to honor Lucy. Lucy's not a person. Lucy was an ape. Well, the evolutionists think she was close to a person, well, related to people, well, that's not true. Here we are, we're unveiling it right now and I have here some of the staff who are from the design team. We have Janelle, we have Ben, we have Doug, and we have Lucy, and there's Lucy. This is part of our starting points room, right beside the human kind. We're dealing with the ape kind, and this is stunning. We're gonna show you some holographic images that are in this exhibit as well, but Ben, first of all, tell us, what's the whole purpose of this exhibit? Well, the whole purpose of this exhibit is showing the ape kind, and specifically the giant apes with which uh, Lucy fits within that, that group. Um, and kind. So we have uh, on this wall over here to our uh, right, I guess, uh, we have the animal kinds, we have the human kinds, and we're showing human, you know, s specifically created in the image of God. You know, they're, they're unique in that creation. Animals are created, you know, as animals, um, as God created them from the beginning. And then we show Lucy, um, as uniquely created as the ape kind. Um, now, now, before we go on, I, I want a videographer. Have a look at the skulls over here. These are all from the human kind, because there's only one kind of human. It's called human. Uh, but these are different variations within the human kind mm -hmm. based on real skulls. But have a look at those skulls. And you know what, Ben, as you look at them, they look human. Yes. And then let's come across here as we scan around from those and look at these skulls over here, and they look ape. <laughs> you right. can easily tell the difference between an ape skull and a human skull. I mm -hmm. mean, really, it is easy. And the, Dr. Uh, Menton, Dr. David Menton, who's our anatomist, he actually teaches on this and shows how easy it is to distinguish an ape skull from a human skull. And yet, evolutionists would look at this and say, well, they're our relatives. Mm -hmm. Right. And so your whole purpose here was to show these skulls here and Lucy was supposed to be one of our ancestors, and she is not an ancestor, she's an ape. What about these skulls on the other side here? They're very small. So we're showing over here the small skulls. Um, we have a modern day chimpanzee, and we also have a early, um, one of the, the young, uh, we're calling them apelings, of what Lucy's kind would have, would have been. So it shows kind of the morphology um, that is teaching here of the ape kinds and how similar they look um, as babies, but as they mature, you see a lot of diversity even within the ape kind and, and just the anatomy and that the way they're, they're so, made up. So are these actually just um, to scale small or are they from young? They are young, yes. Oh, so they're real size? Yep, but actual, from, actual skulls. The from, two on the sides are extinct, but the one in the middle is a modern day chimpanzee. Modern day chimpanzee. Yep. And they all look very similar, don't they? Just, yes. Again, just variation within a kind. Right. As you can see. And um, if we can uh, just have Doug for a moment. Doug, uh, you helped do design this exhibit. You were part of this. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you designed the initial Lucy exhibit that was in the starting points room before we refurbished all this. Right. So as the camera comes around, explain what's going to happen here. Have you seen those yet, the holograms? Okay, so uh, Kathy and I met, uh, my wife Kathy and I met a holographic artist um, many years ago, and I, I was inspired by the fact that you could make it appear as if um, there was something inside the glass, something halfway outside the glass or all the way outside the glass, and it dawned on me as we were at that studio that we could put a hologram in front of an object and make it look like 
the hologram was inside of that object. Years later, uh, when we were talking about the Lucy exhibit and how we could possibly uh, make it just something more dynamic, I said, wait, maybe this is that thing that we could use that for. And so we got some of the um, castings of her, uh, of uh, reproductions of her skeleton, and we assembled the skull and the hip and her right arm, and then we made these holographic images. Um, there, it was just an incredible process, and we did it at what was at the time the last, or the only, I should say, pulse laser holographic studio in the United States. And uh, it's, it's an incredible process. And, and it's interesting, I'll get a videographer, if you come around the front here, you see the, the bones disappear, right? There they are, they disappeared there. Now we come around and you've got the right light on it and it shows up as a holographic image and then you see the bones actually as if they're inside the animal. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's really... Have you, have you seen ex exhibits like this anywhere else? Well, this was the first time that that had ever been done, according to the technician who did it, at least the first time he was aware of it, and he's an expert. But since then, many museums have copied this idea. So they're using yeah. it. So this is uh, an intriguing exhibit. So, Janelle, what, what was your part in this exhibit? Sure. Well, actually, um, over in Hebron... There's a, des there's a design team of myself and then Eric, Dean, and Ethan Harbin. And um, we all worked together on actually all three new exhibits of the upgrade. And um, this room in particular involved a whole lot of design language. You know, just at the topic of this whole room, the starting points, the worldview. Wanted to have something that was a bit more friendly and accessible, something that wasn't too convoluted. And you could kind of, you know, get right away. Like something that kind of has like questions there and then answers there with um, a lot of ways of like quickly breaking things down with like carbon dating and things like this. So I wanted to give people kind of like a more simplified, accessible way to, you know, kind of think for themselves, kind of think through these questions and things like that. So us designers kind of broke up this whole room and this happens to be a wall that I was working on, the whole humankind, animal kinds wall and this happened to fall on there. So. What I did is I designed, we had our content guide to shaping. And then, um, so once I got the content, then it was myself and Ben kind of working on, you know, how we wanted to lay out everything, how we would show the great apes, how we would show the apeling skulls and everything, how we would label things, and just the overall look of it. So it's a very collaborative process and a blast to work on. Really so we see stuff. these three signs here, this one, the mm -hmm. great ape kind, right. variation within kinds is seen across the animal kingdom, and this is certainly the case with the great apes. So we have a sign about that. Then we come and talk specifically about uh, Lucy, who was governed mm -hmm. in 1974, dated at supposedly 3.2 million years, which right. is interesting because the layout totally footprints over here, which we talk about and have a photograph of, mm -hmm. they're supposedly dated to 3.7 million years, which means they are supposedly, from an evolutionist perspective, older than Lucy. Mm -hmm. Lucy, obviously, if you look at the hands and the feet, they're obviously apes, mm -hmm. uh, but the Laetoli footprints look human. Right. So then that was a problem for Lucy from an evolutionist perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the Laetoli exhibit here, and then over here, uh, so Ben, what what is going on in this particular uh, case here? Well, um, this is again from the original case that Doug kind of came up with the concept for um, dealing with how people represent artistically these, you know, taking it from uh, an initial form and then you can artistically represent um, what you're looking at based on your worldview. So you can see the different examples there. You see the, the skull at the top or the head is a neutral model. But then you can see the exact same model down below and different skin variation, different eye colors, different hair colors. And it's interesting, you can, you, if you look at the one on the left, for instance, it looks a bit more like it's sort of a bit of a humanish exactly. sort of a look. Yes. Uh, the one in the middle is more, more like an, an ape. Yes. But that one is an ape man, mm -hmm. uh, Lucy. The one in the middle is a gorilla Lucy, and the other one's an orangutan Lucy. Right. It just all depends on what the artist decided to do. And exactly. that's the whole point. That's, 
that's how kids are brainwashed. Mm -hmm. and people are brainwashed as they go through these secular museums. Right. So this exhibit, this is going to have a glass panel on the outside. Yes, we, we left that off just for the video. Yeah, um, so we'll have. we're going to enclose that glass panel after we do this now. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. when people come here, uh, they won't be able to put their hands in here or anything like that. Right. But this is a spectacular exhibit, and we look at this overhang area. How, how is that sitting there? Well, a lot of engineering. When, when we came up with the initial concept, then he passed that off to engineers. Um, we have Harrison Craig and uh, Mike Connor, who are the guys who come up with how do we build these things, how are they going to structurally hold themselves up. So there's a metal frame underneath there. There's cables also that have sus um, suspension, which is holding that upper part up, because there's a lot of weight in the top, but it's designed to hold itself. Yeah, so why wouldn't it sag down? But I've, a I've actually seen it before it was installed, yes. and it looks like it has a number of cables running over pulleys, and then they tension them. Yes. And that keeps that yep. nice and firm there. Yes. Uh, so it's brilliant design, and it's on wheels. It is. It actually, so, it actually would wheel. Mm -hmm. If we need to get in there for maintenance, we can roll it away from the wall and, and remove the glass and get in there to, to clean or whatever so, things we need to do. So, Doug, with the uh, holographic images here, does that require a special light? I mean, you've got these uh, like plexiglass panels and have the images in there, mm -hmm. and then the, the, the light up there has to shine to a certain angle. It does have to shine at a certain angle. We did play around with different light sources, and they, we found that uh, it's pretty forgiving as long as you have primarily what is a single uh, beam of light hitting it. Because if you have more than one beam of light, you'll actually see an image for every light. So you could have a cacophony of skulls floating inside. I didn't know artists even knew words like that. Cacophony? Boy, that's impressive. Yeah, and you want to cover your cacophony if you're in public. Uh, so anyway, um, the uh, individual lights, we played around with different angles on them. They were engineered for a different case, and so we had to play around to figure out what works for this case, and I think they worked out phenomenally. So you have one light up here for this particular mm -hmm. holographic image, and then you have one for the top one, this one here, which yes. is the skull, and then one for the other one. Yeah, and if you look closely, you can see sort of a ghost image, like foggy image around. I don't know if you can see that on video or not, but there's a foggy image. That's from this soft light around there. So it doesn't really focus unless you have a single light source. And at the back, we have a cast of the bones of Lucy. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can see that they didn't find the entire skeleton. And the arm bones were broken, and the leg bone up there was broken. That's right. And ha so how do they determine, you know, when they, when they, they would try to make Lucy more human-like? Mm. What they do is, first of all, there are not very many bones for the hands and feet. Um, in fact, uh, there's no foot bones. So they always put human feet on Lucy. Um, the other thing that they do is they shorten her arms and they lengthen her legs. You can see that there's m there are missing parts in so her, shorten her, her arms because apes have long arms. If they shorten yeah. them, they're more like human arms. Yeah, to get the proportions just right, they will compress the legs because there's room to do that because there's a part conveniently missing uh, in the bottom and uh, in the, the lower part of the leg and the upper part of the leg. And the same thing is true with the arm bones as well. But when you look at the where those bones are broken, it looks more like the arm bones should be shorter and it's the leg bones that should be extended, correct? Yeah, and um, the other thing is that it looks like that one, that top bone, the humerus is just broken there, but actually the top part, uh, we put this in their arrangement, but the top part, the bone is facing this way and in the bottom part, they've faced it this way. So when you actually rotate that, they don't fit together that way. And so there really could be any amount of length between those bones. And the same thing is true with the forearm bones. And uh, I'm not saying that they necessarily intentionally were lying when they put that together. I'm just saying that that's how that has been arranged and we tried to be really faithful to the way they arranged it. So um, Janelle, you didn't, you didn't sculpt Lucy or anything or you didn't, you didn't do any of those skulls there or anything like that? Oh, no, no, no. So um, 
If we can have that microphone, Doug. Mm -hmm. Right, so anything you see in this particular exhibit, um, anything that has to do with words, anything that has to do with this chart, for instance, these signs, these labels, and this chart, and then all the dimensional letters and everything are things that I designed, you know, kind of working within the framework that the us three designers developed together. And um, we have, you know, within the design language, you have a couple things going on kind of repeated through the room. For instance, this kind of geometric texture is seen kind of on the intro wall of this exhibit. And then, you know, there's like all different other iconography, like an X that means like, you know, a species that's presumed extinct, which you can also see is consistent with this chart here. And um, Wow, she actually put a lot of work into this. That's, can you believe I it? I actually thought through all of this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everything is all coordinated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, everything for consistency, everything to try to, um, you know, teach people, because some of this information was new to me, like the more in-depth things. So, you know, and that was good because I had to learn it, and that's a really good way of, you know, learning how to teach it. Right. So that was a big... That was a big, really fun part of this whole exhibit was well, all what, the let, learning that happened. Let's just walk back here and just get mm -hmm. a picture of it. Because, you know, I've been to some of the leading museums in the world in various places. And, you know, for instance, over in London, you know, the Natural History Museum and the, uh, uh, the museum uh, in London that uh, also has, you know, the British Museum has a lot of the archaeology and so on. This is as good or better than any exhibit you'd see in leading museums. Um, I, I believe that you guys are just incredible uh, the way you're able to do this. So, uh, Doug, what do you think? Do, how does that compare to other exhibits? Um, well, first of all, with all due respect to a lot of amazing exhibits that I have seen in person, I do think that this holds right up. And because um, I've seen some that are just phenomenal. And then I've seen some that you just wonder how in the world they made it into the uh, museum. They're just, some of them are really not that strong. But um, this, this one is, a world is, class is very exhibit. good, yes. It's very world, good. World-class exhibit. Yeah. And Ben, as we finish up here, mm -hmm. what other exhibits have you been involved in? I mean, you guys sort of work behind the scenes. People don't really get to see you guys much at all. Yeah. And uh, you work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. What other exhibits have you been involved in? Um, well, I, I've been around here for about 10 years, uh, started Actually, Lucy was one of the first exhibits that I worked on, the initial... The initial uh, Lucy. That Lucy, was in here, yeah. yeah, that was one of the first projects that I got to work on. I also got to work on um, the Ancient Human exhibit here, which uh, I did a lot of the artwork for, for the, uh, the final colorized version. A lot of people help, again, to, to build these characters. We had uh, Doug, our, our, uh, our uh, digital sculptor, also Eric, worked on the... The, the skulls and creating the, the models. So I got to work on that as well. Um, lots of different things. Yeah, my, it's hard to really count all the things that I've worked on in 10 years. So a lot of cool things. I worked on the Ark Encounter, a lot of the animals there. A lot of great experience. I've learned a lot working with Doug, which has been an amazing, amazing journey here. So, yeah. You know, Doug sculpts all sorts of he does. interesting things. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I, in fact, Doug, what are some of the famous heads you've sculpted of people? Um, famous heads. Um, I just recently did a sculpture of Roberto Clemente um, for the uh, museum in Louisville. Um, I just did a couple for the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame, and I'm, their names are escaping me. I'm not a sports fan, but I sculpt a lot of sports figures. Um, <laughs> he sculpts and doesn't know their name. Yeah. What about um, the Colonel? Didn't you do the Colonel? I, I, I sculpted Colonel Sanders for the KFC Museum. Matthew McConaughey for the Hollywood Wax Museum. Um, I sculpted some stuff recently for a ride down in Universal Studios last year. Um, I'm See, he's famous. I didn't even I'm, know he was that famous. I'm currently, currently working on something, uh, collaboration for the Transatlantic Railroad. Um, and uh, what else? And, and that's just in your spare time. because in Yeah, on, in, on the in, side in, for in fun. On the side. In, in the meantime, you're yeah. working at... Answers in Genesis yeah. for the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. Mm -hmm. Janelle, have you, what, what is your background? Well, funny you should ask because next week is actually my two year anniversary here, so you've which been I here can't for two believe. Years. Okay. Yeah. So um, my background is primarily design, but art of all sorts. Like since I was a kid, I've been an artist of different kinds. 
Um, but I've been working in design for a number of years. My last job was more of a more of an electronic-based kind of thing. But I also did like print stuff for like amusement parks and entertainment things and things like that. So when I got the job over here, it was really a dream job because <laughs> I've always really been into you know like museums and theme parks and teaching things and it's just really a joy to be able to, you know, use the talents that God's given me to work for a ministry like this and work on all these different projects like this because it's really hands-on. Like, um, us designers, we're not just designing things, we're also installing them. So, like, all the things you see in here, we put in pretty much, like all the letters, all the signs and things like that. So, it's a, really a constant learning experience. And you know what? If we were to contract all this out, it would cost millions and millions of dollars. We'll never get it done. But God brought people like you, all of you here, and the, the rest of the team here, dedicated group, and you're not working for Hollywood, but you're working for a ministry that honors the Lord and impacts people for eternity. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very different. And so, right. Ben, I, I just quickly before we end here, yeah. If you could uh, tell them what's, what's your background. My background, well, I grew up in Michigan, um, was homeschooled, and I did art ever since I was very young. Um, my parents encouraged me to use my God-given talents just to, uh, to continue to do what I could to glorify him with it. I never, never really thought I would end up here with it, but um, God has directed my path, which has been amazing, and obviously 10 years um, here at Answers in Genesis. So I did a lot of art, fine art and stuff before here, and um, started selling stuff at a very young age, so had a lot of background in, in selling my artwork. Not one of those people that. that's got that God-given talent. And he's mm. got a cool side gig <laughs> called Mary. And yes, so. also do theater on the side with my wife for company, so oh, we right? started. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. well there you are. I, yes. You know what? You often don't get to, to do this, but to be able to meet some of the people behind all these exhibits, it's one thing when you come here, and hopefully we can reopen in the near future, when you can come in and see all this, and now you've met just some mm -hmm. of the staff. We've had others on other videos that we've done, uh, but it's fun to be able to meet the people that God has brought here and mm -hmm. see how they've used their talents, and then look at the results in this new exhibit. Mm -hmm. So you're going to now put the glass on and yep. close the Lucy exhibit. Yes. But just amazing to, to see what you have done. It, and many people wouldn't realize, I've, I've seen this all in pieces over at the warehouse before it was all put together, and it's quite an engineering feat, mm -hmm. I mean, to be able to actually do an exhibit like this, right. and then all of the rest of it that goes as a part of it, and you know, to see it in bits and pieces of metal and, mm -hmm. and wire, and then to see it all come together, and then to see it look like this, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely amazing. I'm just, I just praise the Lord for the team he's brought along, mm. And uh, we need to pray that God will open the museum up again very soon so mm -hmm. that all of your talents and what you've done mm -hmm. can be here impacting uh, all the people that come through. So mm -hmm. with that, hey, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed our Lucy exhibit. Thanks to Ben. Thanks to Janelle. Thanks to Doug. Uh, talented people that God has brought uh, to this ministry. Maybe God is calling you to be in this ministry in the future at some stage. Maybe you've got your talents that you want to use for the Lord and you never know what God may do and the doors he may open for you. Hope you have a great day.